Dave Daly Bubble Time. Good morning, it is Dominic Steele, and thanks for joining us. It's the 23rd of August, uh, Wednesday morning, and uh, another good day yesterday at the um, South Sydney Regional Conference yesterday morning, and then uh, back for the Pastor's Heart yesterday afternoon, and uh, Simon Camilleri, and a uh, really good guy. Now, um, we are in Isaiah chapter 51, and... Uh, What's going on here is pilgrims and uh, a little background from Barry Webb. And it's, it's very helpful to hear this background. The whole of this passage is colored by the goal that is reached in verse 11. It's about pilgrimage to Zion. Let me read you verse 11. The ransomed of the Lord will return and come to Zion with singing, crowned with unending joy. Joy and gladness will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee. I'm looking forward to going back to Jerusalem. Uh, And we're going to go back to Jerusalem singing and there's going to be extraordinary joy. Now, you have to bear in mind, and we can forget this, that pilgrimage to Zion was a huge thing in the Israelite life, for the Old Testament life. And um, three times every year at the three great festivals, the, the Passover, the Festival of Weeks and the Festival of Tabernacles, the pilgrims came streaming to Zion, to Jerusalem, from every corner of Israel. And where possible, whole families would go together and it would be meeting friends along the way and they'd be laughing and talking and stories and singing and rejoicing in the Lord when they got to Zion, recalling God's goodness to them, renewing their commitment to him and to one another. And, as Barry Webb points out, some of the happiest memories of childhood would be those journeys, some of the happiest memories of family life. And those who couldn't go to Zion because of illness or old age, well, they would feel deprived. They would feel like they're missing out. And then now we've got to the time of the exile of Babylon and no one can go to Zion. Well, what a sense of deprivation. How terrible that sense of deprivation. And a generation is growing up with no personal memory of the journey to Zion at all, and yet we're looking forward to it. Now, here's the thing. Many have given up, but some are holding on to the idea that there will be a day that I will go to Zion again or that my children will go to Zion again. Now, here it is. Listen to me. Chapter 51, verse 1. You who pursue righteousness, you who are looking forward to Zion, you who seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were cut. Look to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, to Sarah, who gave birth to you. When I called him, he was only one. I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He'll comfort all her waste places. He'll make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving and melodious song. Pay attention to me, my people. Listen to me, my nation. Instruction will come for me. My injustice for a light for the nations. I'll bring it about quickly. My righteousness is near. My salvation appears. It's going to be great. We're going to get to go to Zion again. But it won't just be for us from Israel. Rather... My arms will bring justice to the nations, verse 5. The coasts and islands will put their hope in me. They will look to my strength. Look up to the heavens, look to the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment. Its inhabitants will die like gnats, but my salvation will last forever. This promise of celebration in Zion is not just for national Israel, those who have had hopes for the Zion within national Israel, but also those who hope in the Lord from all around. And then those who are mocking and knocking, well, um, listen to me, you who know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my instruction. Do not fear disgrace by men. Do not be shattered by their taunts. For moths will devour them like a garment. Worms will eat them like wool. But my righteousness will last forever. My salvation for all generations. Wake up, wake up, arm of the Lord. Clothe yourself with strength. Wake up as in days past, as in generations long ago. Wasn't it you who hacked Rahab to pieces, who pierced the sea monster? Wasn't it you who dried up the sea? Now, what do we make of that verse, verse 9? Well, I'll give it to you from verse 8. What of those who mock them? They seem 
so sophisticated and superior now, but one day they will be no more glorious than cankered garments, verse 8. What's that line? Cankered garments. Moths will devour them like a garment. Worms will eat them like wool. We've heard this before, of course. In 50 verse 9, says Webb, the enemies of the servant were described in exactly the same way. And how appropriate the repetition is here. For the faithful people of the Lord will follow in the footsteps of the servants of the Lord. They will share in his sufferings and share in his vindication. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time in exile when there is a promise of renewing the pilgrimage to all your faithful people. And Lord, long we long today for the day we will make the pilgrimage to the spiritual Jerusalem, the new heavens and the new earth, and the joy will abound like described in this passage. And we pray this in Christ Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Thanks for joining us on Daily Bible Time. See you tomorrow morning. God bless. Thank <music> you.